welcome, gentle readers, to our next exciting podcast, episode four of Jazz Up Your Day, Just Do One. So, Ellen of the Connors, what we're going to be talking about? Well, Mr. Christian, we are going to be talking about goal setting today. So, how to superset your goals. Very exciting. Très magnifique. It does sound very good. Tell us a little bit more about what goal setting is. Okay. So, the first thing to note, I think, about goal setting is that you have to be at the heart of it. So, your goals have to belong to you and then you're more likely to be successful. So setting a goal is really important because otherwise, how do you know that you've been successful? And it's always an excuse for a party as well, I think. So that's a really important thing to do as well. So I think if you're at the heart of it as well, then you're really engaged with your goal as well. And you're looking forward to achieving it. Um, And you set yourself that big audacious goal, but then you also set yourself micro goals and you celebrate each step of the way. So that's what we're going to be exploring today. So do you have any top tips, Christian? It's funny you should ask, yes, I do, actually. I always think if, uh, in at number one, ask yourself, on a scale of one to ten, how motivated am I to start working towards my goal? One, not at all. <laughs> ten, 100% ready and got to go for it. Whatever you score, ask yourself, what would make it the next number on the scale. So, for example, if I were to say six, Helen, what would you say to me? Oh, I'd say seven. Mm. (laughs) So what would make it a seven? And if you ask what would make it the next number up, that'll give you some resources. You'll start thinking about who could help, what could help, um, what would make it possible to move forward with your goal. Oh, I love that because it's only one increment, Mm -hmm. but it's achievable, isn't it? So that's one of the important things, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, fabulous. So I think the next tip I'd say in at number two is motivation. So, oh, my goodness, what if you're not motivated? So we do know from the studies that motivation comes after you start doing something. So think about the tiniest thing that you can do to get yourself going. So, for example, if you're wanting to do some exercise, then it might just be thinking, oh, I need some new trainers because you always need new trainers. You don't want to damage your truest, you know, do you? Um, So that's the first thing that you could do. And then the second thing might be to put your trainers by your bed. I did hear of somebody who went to sleep in their gym kit so that they could get up and out the next day really fast. That wouldn't be me. Just think of the sweat. Oh, not in this weather as well. No, that would be quite grim, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, getting started is often the place where we get stuck and things seem a bit overwhelming because we've got that big goal. But a good way to leap over the hurdle is to think about the most ridiculous, super small action that you can take to get you going. And that'll set you off on what I like to call your goal safari. (gasps) Safari's a goodie. (laughs) Very nice. Well, in at number three, plan it out. Draw out what your goal will look like. This will help you to visualise your goal and you can keep that masterpiece in somewhere where you'll see it every day, maybe either where the kettle is or if you get up when you're brushing your teeth. Place your visual goal in front of you and that will start the day the visual way oh i love that i love the visual and actually there's loads of research in there to show that visualization is really key in terms of getting you to the end of that run so people often visualize themselves getting to the door of the house after a run i visualize myself having that nice cup of coffee in the morning when I'm done, yeah. Very good visualising. It also helps if you visualise the end point and work backwards because oh. then you can see how you might plan the various steps. Oh. So. That is a fabulous tip, Mr Christian. We try best. We do. What's next? Okay, so we've got um, making your goal smart. So you've got the goal that you want to achieve Um, You want it to be as specific as possible so that you can measure it. So this is really important in goal setting. Uh, It's got to be smart and so you know how to get there. So S, specific. I'm sure you all know this, but S for specific or significant, measurable, so you can make it meaningful and you can measure it. You know that you've made progress and progress is a big thing in terms of goal setting. 
attainable. So you don't want it to be so massive that you can't achieve it because that's just really soul destroying. And you'd crawl just under that duvet again, wouldn't you? Oh gosh, I would. Yeah, definitely. And then you want it to be relevant as well. So why are you doing it? So knowing why you're doing it. Um, and being able to reward yourself as well. And T is for time-bound or trackable. So it's time-bound, um, you're looking towards something in a specific set of time scales, um, and that's more like you're more likely to be successful. So if you can make it smart, so for example, um, I want to lose weight, well, you can make that more specific by, you know, by saying I want to lose two pounds in old money, by such and such a date and I'm going to do it in this way and I'm going to measure it in this way. So you make it as specific as possible. So that will be my next tip. I like that. Mm. I like that. And to get me out from under the duvet, uh, the next tip would be find yourself an accountable buddy. Now, who does not like an accountable buddy? Telling someone what you're doing and setting a date that you are going to achieve that first small step by can really help to motivate you because you've told somebody, you've told them the date you're going to do it by and psychologically you've got a bit of accountability there. So actually sharing your goal and having somebody who'll just check in with you uh, can be really helpful. I know when I started running, um, first time, I may have done it a little bit wrong because I thought I was... Uh, going to die. So it took me around about three hours to cool down. Then I realised I wasn't jogging. Um, I was actually just sprinting. So Oh, Lord. Yeah. So I told my friend, uh, and she did say, you silly sausage. <laughs> uh, did she use those words? Well, she might have said something else. She says, you weren't jogging. You was actually just sprinting. Um, so I... So she told me what I should have been doing. I thought, that's really good. So we started to to jog together, set a goal for the future, uh, which was a 10K in Manchester. Wow. So we had something to work towards. Uh, and she, we was at each other's accountability buddy, which worked really well. Uh, we had a regular day to do things and we built up nice and gently, gave herself nine months to plan for it. Very good. So accountability buddy. It's very easy to say. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Oh, that does sound good. And um, link to that that we've, we weren't going to talk about, but it's really key actually in terms of goal setting is that feedback. So feedback is really key and that's going to help you either to uh, modify what you're doing or to get back on track. I think the key is finding somebody that you trust and somebody that will champion you and look after you as well. So that's sometimes the, the key, isn't it, to get the right person? I think that's brilliant because without the feedback and sharing my story, I, I wouldn't have started jogging again. I just classed it under the extreme sport. <laughs> You'd have been legging it round. <laughs> I wasn't going to do again, no. Uh, so, yeah, definitely getting some feedback is a really extra Brucey bonus tip there. It is, yeah, it is. And I'm glad you're here to tell the tale. So am I. So am I. <laughs> and I think you might have another tip, mightn't you? Well, I do, actually, yes. So identify potential obstacles in advance and think about how you might get over them. So it could be about getting feedback off others, Google it, do a wee bit of research. So actually plan, maybe from your visualisation of your goal, look at any peaks and troughs or any potential obstacles and then think ahead of time how you're going to get over them. So when it does happen, you've already thought about it and got a plan to move forward. Oh, that is fabulous. And it seems like we planned this, Christian, because uh, we're going to move on to priming a goal. Oh, so. I know. So this is massive in goal setting. So a primed goal is a planned goal and one that's really conscious. So that shows persistence towards your desired end state or the goal that you're wanting to achieve. And it helps us to overcome obstacles on the way. Because there are always obstacles, but there's just strategies to get over those obstacles. So there's different ways to prime a goal. So we've got photographs and we've got images, positive words and quotes. And you know me, Christian, I do love a nice quote. That we gets do. me going, yeah. Music and as we mentioned before, visualisation, um, you might use other people that are in that field 
um, that you're, you're working in your goal towards. So if you're, for example, doing sports, it's not obviously not the only goal that you're going to set, but if it's a sporting or exercise, you might use other greats like Usain Bolt always talks about the greats that he follows as well. And then other people use in still in that sporting arena, like the fans, the noise, the chants, and they engage the crowd. But you can apply that to your own thing. So your fans are the people that champion you, uh, you know, that give you some noise, a bit of like, oh, getting on with it. Yeah, ooh, you, can, go, oh, you can do it. Um, chants, engaging the crowd. So all those are different ways to prime your goals. So really important in goal setting. Oh, I love priming a goal. Well, those are some lovely top tips. And as our gentle readers may be uh, used to now, I'm just going to ask you, Helen. Yeah. If you were to just do, do one, one, which one would it be? Mine would be around finding a good champion that I could, that I could trust. So somebody that knows what I want to achieve um, so that they know the arena that I'm working in. Um, but who's really going to encourage me as well. And that's what I would focus on at the minute, finding that champion. Good on you. Sounds very good. And Christian, if you were just going to do one, which one would you choose? Well, I know what I'm like. So I would simply just put a date in my diary and stick to it. This is why I love working with you, Lady Helen of the Connors is because you're very good. So you're a bit of accountability and get me started because you often put a date in our diaries to get something. That really motivates me, having a date in the diary where I have a look at my calendar, think, oh, I'm going to start that today, really helps. Mm, nice one. Mm. So just to finish off then, we've got a couple of things, I suppose, that round up what we've just been talking about. So... The key things are being involved in setting your own goals. You are at the heart of it. And I like to think of me and you, Christian, in a big heart, champion everybody no. to, to move forward with their, achieving their goals. <laughs> Seek inspiration from various places. So it might be in individuals. It might be in quotes or images. Focus on the emotional reward and how you'll feel at the end of achieving what your goal is. Mm. Find somebody that you trust. And of course, and me and you are really good at this, Christian, celebrate success. You've got to celebrate. Yes, treat yourself to something nice. That's what I always say. Yes, maybe some new trainers because you've so burnt them out from running so fast. Well, thank you very much for listening to us. And just to let you know, coming up in our next podcast, we're going to be looking at the gut. So stay tuned for a podcast on the gut. Au revoir, petit chou Au revoir.